it's interesting because my parents were both teachers and I and I I did consider many times going into education when I was younger mm. but what stopped me was that silly things was things like having a tattoo I got a tattoo mm. when I was 17 18 years old and at that point I think it was actually not allowed in that you know teachers couldn't have tattoos right. Wow. And, you know, I've had my hair every different color under them. You know, I've got blue hair at the moment. You can't see it at the moment so much, but um, yeah. it's usually blue at the moment. And I've had every color under the rainbow kind of thing of, of hair color. And I was like, I would have to be somebody I am not to become a mm -hmm. teacher. Right. And so yeah. I wasn't, I, I thought, well, I could do it, but I wouldn't be happy and I probably wouldn't be very good at it and I wouldn't fit in. I yeah. wouldn't, be, wouldn't be doing anybody any favors. I didn't go to university because I knew, I didn't know I had ADHD mm. at the time, but I knew that I couldn't finish anything. And from a survival point of view, I thought I'd need to get a student loan to go to right. university. And knowing that I never finish anything means that I'm going to have, I'd end up in debt and without a qualification. So right. I, I basically avoided it. But my, in a sense, as a teacher, as a trainee teacher now, or, you know, sort of I'm, I'm Pretty, mo pretty much most of the way through it now, but I, I sort of started as an intern at around to last year. One of the questions I have is, is what does it take to prepare young people to be, you know, in a sense for adulthood and for things like university? And I don't think it's what people think it is. And I think right. that there's, um, there's a lot of people who also don't believe that what that it's what, uh, the, you know, the sort of the mainstream think it is either. In fact, when I told the authorities that I wanted to send my children to a democratic school because the, the other schools weren't working. They said they can't go to a, a school where in terms of a self-determination school where it's all student led because they have autism, therefore they lack the initiative. Mm. They cannot do that. They don't have the executive functioning or the initiative to be able to be in a self-determined school. Uh -huh. And I know my boys and yes, mm. they have problems with scheduling, so do I and things like that. It will take time. It won't be easy, but I also know that it's that they want to be able to do things they want to do, and right. that they don't need the lessons in a sense. One of the problems right. they had at the regular school was that the lessons they were being taught, a lot of it they already knew. I was told that I shouldn't send my boys to this school because they wouldn't be able to survive the self-determination stuff. And somebody I know who also has a, an autistic son, very gifted academically, and he went to a special school and did all the stuff academically and then went on to university. But then in the first year ended up coming back home because mm. he couldn't cope. He wasn't doing chores in the student house. He was partly maybe not ready to leave home, mm. but also school hadn't prepared him for student life in the same way. And That's like right. a lot of people at that age, in the first and second year, they can end up having, you know, basically a nervous breakdown yeah. because what the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or turn to or turn to other you know to substances. School can prepare you better emotionally, socially, and emotionally. That social and emotional preparation is far more important than whether or not you can pass a maths test or not. This is the Agentic Schools podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world, where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>